Very good morning. On my behalf, my name is Petri Kempinen. I'm one of the uh, host moderators here and very, very pleased to be able to hold this session with the, with the Flanders, who is uh, our guest region this year. Pick mic number one, good. Hello, hello. Please, hello. hello. So, this is Samuel Brunel, and he's producer at, at Ludanime. So, can you explain a bit about the structure of the company? What, what is it that you're doing all together? Um, it once started off with uh, one cinema in Bruges um, with the occasional screenings. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> From that, it became so popular that uh, became a full-time, uh, full-time theater with uh, multiple screens. Uh, and from that came the need to um, do distribution in the Benelux for theatrical. Um, from that became um, the need to co-produce to have financing in Belgium, hands-on uh, production afterwards, and uh, that makes today that we have a um, we have five cinemas in Belgium. Um, we do co-production, minority co-production, we have our own production, we do animation, um, we have a small EST streamer and we have a, quite a good um, distribution uh, part of the company as well for the Benelux. Uh. So you are distributing both theatrical and uh, also on the different platforms, right? Yeah. So it could, it could cover TV series and films. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And uh, what is your, I mean, I, I know that you've been very much involved with the Nordic countries before. For example, I mean, State of Happiness is a co-production mm -hmm. with, with you guys, the Norwegian. So, but I mean, what is your main experience from the Nordic collaboration? I think um, back in the days, um, it was a region that focused on high-end productions um, and by that made that they had very high quality in their productions and to step in as a co-producer gave a lot of benefits for our region as well. I think we have a cross-pollination in, um, in terms of know-how between, uh, between the two territories. So mm -hmm. I think we, we learned a lot from each other, uh, but in the beginning maybe us from them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, what, what were the first steps actually? I mean, was it quite, quite traditional that you were doing some parts of the post-production and stuff like that or, or how was it? I think <clears throat> it's the first thing we look at when we do, when we do a co-production is to look at um, post-production because if you um, have financing in Belgium, that implies that you have spent in Belgium because it's a spend-based system. Mm. Um, and co and post-production is the most obvious thing to look at in the beginning um, mm. because it requires your DOP to travel over to Belgium and uh, your director um, and you can do most of your post-production with guys like, uh, with guys like uh, Flo mm. um, <clears throat> and apart from that there are multiple possibilities. I think it's a tailor-made situation for every for every production. Uh, we sometimes send crew, um, equipment. Um, I mean, it's you can take it as far as you as you like. Mm. Yeah. And in in your specific role, I mean, you are. I know that you are running the co-production. So, what is it? What is it that you are looking for? I mean, what kind of collaboration, co-production? Is there anything related to the stories, ideas? I mean, please. Explain a bit. I mean, what is yeah. in your mind? I think um, <clears throat> I think in the in the first step we of course read the scripts mm -hmm. to see whether it matches our DNA. Um, if we if we feel that it's something for us, even then we discuss how editorial involved we will be. I mean, that's we follow the lead of the main producer. Um, it can uh, go from being fully involved in rewrites. Um, 
or even have a, a Flemish or a Belgian writer involved, uh, or sometimes we, we step aside and only go do the hands-on mm -hmm. production and the construction of the production. Yeah. Is there anything specific in the stories that you are interested in? Uh, I think uh, by tradition we are um, a, a crime house, eh? um, <laughs> but um, so it, it, it's a benefit if it matches our DNA, mm -hmm. uh, because then um, distribution steps in as well, and we can top it off with a with a with an MG. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes that you have tax shelters, Green Flanders, um, or an, another economical fund, and an MG, which makes actually that in some uh, situations you can be the equivalent of a of a large territory actually mm. in financing. Uh, your MG, I mean, does it cover Benelux or is it like more global? How is no, it? No, it's only only Benelux. And it's only is it like all all the possible platforms or can you, I mean, can you combine? I mean, with somebody else. I mean, how do you want to work if there is somebody else who is interested in some other? I mean, window in Belgium. Do you, do, is it possible for you to work together or? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, of course, I think um, it's um, a bit of a weird territory uh, yeah. because we share the same language with the Netherlands, but in certain areas we have different culture. Yeah. Uh, in the su southern part of Belgium, it's French speaking, which mostly looks at France. So also there, I think it depends on the production, whether how, how it's constructed in terms of uh, um, in terms of the rights internationally, mm. sometimes it's without a certain part of uh, Belgium. Uh, it depends. Every production is different in that sense. Yeah. But we, we prefer an all rights deal, of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What about your own projects? I mean, have um, because yesterday it was, I mean, in the, in the second panel, in the Mayhem panel, actually, Helen was talking about transport, which was. Uh, Finnish production that came to Belgium for also for story reasons, but I mean, I kind of understood from the debate that there is not so much. I mean, traffic, the other way around, the other way, other direction. So, what about your stories? I mean, yeah. how? I mean, have you found some, something that you would want to collaborate with? I mean, that is coming from your DNA. I think we. Um I think due to the fact that we have this international network, mm -hmm. makes that we have a slight preference for a high-end series. Mm. Um, but in domestic financing, I think it's hard to meet that high-end uh, quality. So in that sense, I think we most of the time try to look for a larger territory to include in the financing. Mm. Um, and of course, I mean, it's still quite obvious to try to co-produce with the Netherlands, uh, which makes that we we can meet that high quality mm. um, and that implies that you can that you have more potential internationally, I think. Mm. So that's I think quite common structure for us in uh, in our own productions. Mm. But uh, you're right, I mean our our financing structure makes that we don't really have um money that can travel abroad, unless mm. it's of course necessary for editorial reasons. So. Yeah. So yeah. your money needs to be spent back home, basically? Um, <clears throat> more or less, yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. 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 And I mean, now that you come, I, I've seen you here quite often in, in, in Yotabori, and, uh, and you come to the Nordic countries, I mean, what is it that appeals you? I mean, why, why, I mean, of course there is the business interest, but there must be something else. I mean, can you just... But I think um, even today we still see a lot of Nordic Noir yeah. uh, and uh, the Krimis are still part of, uh, of what we do. Mm. So I think that tradition is still very, very lively today. Um, mm. And uh, I think we have a quite extended network in, in the Nordics uh, by now, so... It's it's I don't know it's it, it's of our, in our interest to maintain that uh, that network of course yeah yeah okay thank you for now Samuel yeah. I'll get you back on stage thanks. <laughs>